Hello, welcome back. Last time I did the first little bit of my first level. If all goes well today, maybe first level will get done, maybe not. We'll see. Let's go up here. Rock friend keeps me safe, yes? Go bash and thrash, nasty human. So we got a goblin there. Several layers of doors in between. Rock friend here, this rock golem. And I'm gonna be disarmed. This is a small room. There's a wubba here. All right, so I'm disarmed with a wubba. And all I can really do is press that plate. When I press the plate, Rock Friend comes and bashes and thrashes me, or at least tries to. But the Wubba might be able to keep him from doing that. Alright, so I need to... I'd like my sword back. That had thin ice under it, uh, but there's another token here. So to open that, I have to step on this. Um, which I can do now, but it doesn't do me any good because now I'm stuck. Wait. So how does this work? Like, I need my sword at some point to kill this goblin. Hold on, so this had thin ice. There's a tunnel. Why is there a tunnel? Oh, okay, I think I see. Right, so this is like a little hidey hole where if a goblin is loose, it will step on this arrow and get me my sword back, and this is an anti-monster barrier. That's right, that's how I set this up. Okay, uh, so I need to survive pressing a few plates because the goblin's gonna help me get my sword, and uh, there's a rock golem on my tail. Move order um, is like that. So basic idea here is not this, this is wrong, because then I get bashed and thrashed. Uh, but if I do something a little different, I think there's a way to make this happen. Let's see. So I can rotate around the golem like that. Um, since we're in this arrangement... Okay, so there are these little juts out here. Those are for something? I forget what, though. Let's see, in this arrangement I think I can maybe recover? No, I cannot. So how does the Woba need to be exactly? I need it different somehow. Is it this? It's not exactly that. Is it this? No. Alright, so what am I doing? There's a sequence of moves here that somehow results... I feel like there's like one direction of rotation that's better than the other for some reason. Let's try this way around. What is this for? I forget. Uh, it's a place to stash a golem for a moment. That's what it's for. Yeah, okay, so this is why clockwise is better. I think I remember there's one additional layer of trickery here. Uh, but right now this looks pretty straightforward. Deceptively so, because I'm going to get to this stage and something's going to go wrong. Rock friend too slow, I scratch you up myself. Yeah, what goes wrong is the goblin catches me, and there's nothing I can do about it. There is one thing though, so you notice that this was the last door that was opened here. What if I do that in a different order? Rock friend keeps me safe. So I'm going to skip stepping on these first two. Actually, let's just skip that one until I've dealt with the others. So that'll keep the goblin a little farther back. I said the right G word this time. <laughs> I wasn't quite sure, but I did. Uh, right, so we're going to do a transfer like this. There we go. Uh, that works. Okay. So then I keep that door closed. Do another couple of transfers. I found this particular mode of movement a whole lot of fun here. Um, this whole, like, get around a uh, rock golem with wubba protection kind of thing. And this is going to be kind of a recurring theme of this holds. You'll see a pattern a lot like this in several places. Alright, so now I can step on this and have some goblin distance. Uh, some, not like a whole lot. Let's see. That's the best way to do this. Yeah, I can take that step and be safe. There we go. Okay, and my anti-monster barrier keeps me safe. Goblin goes there, golem is there, and now I have a sword and everything's cool. I can even stash the golem, kinda, not really. Alright, that's all it takes. Neat. Fluff puffs get away. Shoo, I says it. Grayskin is coming and I need to get down from here. So we got, hold on, before I step in here. So we got a goblin up high on, uh, on a door, got himself into a situation. 
Um, I kind of tried to think about like what the personality of each one of these goblins would be that you're interacting with and give them a slightly different flavor to their writing for it. Um, I forget exactly what I decided, but you know, it comes out in the dialogue. That's just how it is. All right, so two puffs here, making this goblin nervous. He's up high and he needs to go somewhere and he doesn't like a situation. Two constructs. Oh, I like this room. That's right. I was real happy with what I what I pulled off here. This is neat. Um, so we got... All right. Um, so goblin has to die. Golems have to die. Uh, constructs have to die. There's a fuse here on a plate. Uh, nothing in here other than throw that can light a fuse. And this one closes that door. So if I want to light that fuse, I'm going to be trapped in here until the room is clear and then I get let back out. What's this about? Oh, this is just for symmetry with the three hot tiles here. So you light the fuse, you wait a while, powder keg blows up, goblin gets down, so I let him out. Um, I have my sword this whole time. Then we just got to deal with the constructs and the, uh, yeah, so this is mandatory for getting the goblin out. So you have to light the fuse to clear the room. If I just kill everything else... Let's see, what specifically goes wrong? How do I open these? Oh, with that. Right, okay. Stuckings in there now, Delver. Uh-huh. So the goblin died. Nothing else did. All right, so the go uh, golems, <laughs> the other G words, uh, are kind of the problem here. Um, so the idea here, we got these two, um, shallow water spots and two puffs and two constructs. So when a construct steps off a trap door or thin ice, it will drop it. However, if I were to form thin ice there and leave a construct in place and never have it step off, then the construct would stay and be an obstacle for the golem both of the golems, to die on these two hot tiles. Then the goblin can die there, because I can just stand here with my sword this way. Let's see if I can demonstrate that. No, he died to a puff. Whatever. Uh, anyway, so this room is all about dancing with the puffs and the constructs until you get them to just the right place together. Uh, this is wrong. And also, right, hot tiles do kind of get in the way. Uh, I can... Offset you like this, offset you like this. Uh, now I need to make sure I don't kill one on this hot tile. Okay, I did it. All right, so now that construct rubble has to stay there for the rest of the room. Uh, so we'll have to be close every single time. Yeah, I can get just close enough to the puff to attract it away from the goblin there. Okay, so I need to deal with the construct. All right, so you're still there. I don't need you yet, but I will soon. Can I put you in a better place? Not really. You're just going to be there. All right, so now puff alignment. Okay, so what I have to do is I have to get from here to... Okay, no, I do want you in a different place, actually. Let's put you way over here. So I'm going to have to get from here with my sword in this construct to a place where this construct can step on that spot when the puff is there. Um, I'm not convinced that's currently impossible. Uh, I should be though, because it is. All right, let's do this a little differently. Yeah, I need the puff farther east. I can do that. Okay, this is good. Almost. You're gonna step on that though, aren't you? No, you're not. Uh, oh, yes you are. Also, the puff wants to move. Um, it can do that. No, it can't. Alright, well, we're close to the setup we need. Um, if I just kill you right there and then align the puff... Uh, here will do. If I can align the puff, should be possible. In fact, this works perfectly. So wait here, kill this. I'm not close enough. Um, okay, I need to be a little closer somehow, which means the construct needs to be farther away. It can walk across that hot tile. 
That's farther away. Okay, that works. Smash. Puff comes here. It doesn't really matter which way I face where my sword is, is, is the, the relevant thing here. Um, yeah, problem is, this would be good, except I have to step on the plate now, so maybe it does matter where my sword is. So if my sword is here, then this works. Smash. Uh, that's fine. There we go. Okay. So we got Construct Rubble on Thin Ice. Construct Rubble on Thin Ice. I think I can do this now. Golems die. I'm gonna face north so the goblin gets afraid of my sword and stays there where the hot tile is. And he dies. And time to let me out before the constructs revive. I like that room a lot. The core concept made me very happy. Not coming out. Nope. Going to stay put here until brothers take care of Delver. So this goblin has a little fortification here. He doesn't want to move. This is the thing that lets him out. And um, so this room has some readability problems. I'm not entirely happy with like... Uh, you have to be very familiar with goblin movement to like see from this initial state what it is you can do. You can play around and figure stuff out, I guess. But the core thing to see is that... Uh, oh, hey, right. There's a challenge here. Let's... Mm, Let's not do the challenge at first. I'll try and do this both ways. So anyway, I have to step here for the goblin to get out. Something has to step here for me to get out afterward, because this is never turning off. Uh, that something is going to be the goblin. So what you need to notice, and I, I should have put some kind of like diagonal line in here somewhere. What you need to notice is that this particular space... I do have this checkerboard uh, pattern on the grass. This particular space is in such a place where a goblin... Oh wow, this involves even tie-breaking, like this is... Yeah, I could have made that more obvious. Anyway, the, tie, the way the tie-breaking happens to work is if a goblin is somewhere in this wedge, like this wedge of the room, uh, He'll, he'll sidestep north around obstacles and make it all the way up here if there are solid things where those force arrows are. And come to me, then go around my sword, step here, assuming there's a stepping stone there, and let me out. Yeah, I wish I'd put some sort of, like, some sort of visual hint for that, because I don't, I don't like that... You have to be that familiar with goblin behavior and also spot that this is a diagonal and also <laughs> assume that the tie-breaking, or know that the tie-breaking rules, uh, assume that it, it will bump the goblin up over this lip. Because like one more step would not happen because then he would just want to go south instead. Anyway, uh, but it does work out. Uh, a vision token was activated by scripting, I guess. Okay, so you just always get that vision token no matter how you enter the room. Because evil eye sight lines are very important. So yeah, if you look at what's in the room, uh, possible obstacles that could go here. Powder keg, mirror, evil eye, evil eye, evil eye. These also have to die at some point. So let's look at these evil eyes. To awaken this one, obviously I need reflection. Also gotta block him with a keg to even get any reflection. So I need reflection in order for him to see behind him and wake up in a way he won't step through that arrow. Uh, this one I can just awaken at any time. This one needs some assistance getting away from the briar. That's what this force arrow is for. So you gotta blow up the keg uh, to eliminate the briars to get this evil eye out. Eliminating an obstacle. So we're down to three evil eyes and a mirror. And you're gonna need a stepping stone here. So we're down to three evil eyes. So those three have to be parked here where the arrows are. Um... I guess I'll go ahead and do the challenge version of this room up front, because it's not that different from the non-challenge one. So the rest of this is just evil eye dancing. So if I try to do this and get around him, it doesn't really happen. Like, I just can't quite get him over here to this area, so I need some additional assistance. That mirror is now not only reflecting, but also an obstacle for sight. And this is a usable obstacle, so I think if I do, it's either this or this. I'm not sure which way is friendlier. Let's try that way. Uh, other way might be friendlier. Well, let's try this way and see what happens. I can go around like this. 
And things are happening, yeah. This is... Uh, this isn't quite right, though. Let's see, how do I... Rearrange this. My sword can't go into either of these things, is the thing. Let's try this way instead. See if that's any better. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so now I can do this kind of walking around, and he's on the correct side of me. So, to do the non-challenge, uh, the simple way is kind of just to, like, go in here and lead the eye down like that. To do the challenge, that's what this cactus is for. Uh, so that means I have to swap to the other side now. Can I just do that here, or do I need additional assistance? Doesn't seem like I can just do it. Okay, so what's the idea? I can't... Maybe I, like, take the keg with me or something. Let's see. How would that happen? It wouldn't. Maybe I take the mirror with me. It's something like that. Uh, so if the mirror had been... Here-ish, I should be able to get it. Yeah, okay, so I can get to the mirror, bring it along, have it become an additional obstacle, and just do kind of the same sort of dance as I did back there. Uh, maybe I'd prefer this. So now I can put my sword inside these obstacles a little bit more comfortably. There we go. There we go. Okay, so you're on my on that side. I park you there. All right, that's one. Now this one's also facing west. Well, this one was facing east, but had to go west. So I do have to wake this up from its west side. Um, I'm gonna lose the keg, but the mirror can kind of take its place. So keg goes there. Mirror is going to probably do this. All right, so you're with me now. Oh boy, uh, let's try this the other way around, maybe? Yeah, that's not what I want. There's definitely a dance that gets this done somehow. Can I put the mirror there? This might work, so the mirror's kinda with me now. Okay, the mirror's definitely with me now and I can get it on the cactus. There we go, that works. This all feels right to me. Okay, two eyes, gotta pack them in a little differently so I can get the third. Third one I can just get anytime. You have no special requirements. I do still need to turn you around like this, of course. But that's already set up and ready to go. Neat. Okay, my, my packing undid itself, so it was actually pointless at that time. Mirror goes here. I step here. Delver trapped. Maybe safe to take a peek. So if I had, um... If I had released this goblin without all of the evil eyes in place, let's just take a look at what that would look like. Like, if any of those spaces are open, he'll just step into them, of course. So those have to all be filled up for him to decide he can sidestep around. Uh, right. I need to do the mirror. So he decides to come out because I am trapped. But, foolishly, he steps there. Ah, I got too close! Why well, didn't stay in Heidi Hole? This one, not as good! No, it's not, because then I can reach you. Respecting personal space. Yeah, what was the description here? Don't step into the alternate floor area, like that, near the goblin before releasing it. Yeah, so you release the goblin first. And check it out. Exit level. So here are stairs down. However, what about that weird little force arrow path in the water? And there's conspicuously a corner missing from this map. And also, there's this weird thing. What do you suppose that is? So let's go play with a staff in an empty room. And as a result, somehow gain access to a room to its west.
All right, so here's a staff. Here's an empty room. It's not completely empty, though. I can change its emptiness. Here's some puffs. Here's some more puffs. Uh, let's see. I want to pack these into that aerospace. All right, you all come in there. And you can too. Okay, so puffs are loaded. Um, this is a little bit move order dependent. Uh, so what we're gonna do is get the puffs over here and use them to bridge to the west. <laughs> Your only real clue for that is this and this. So clearly there's a room here. Clearly there's something to do here once you're done. You got a stick, you got some puffs, have fun. <laughs> this is where I really learned to uh, do puff manipulation. Let's see if I remember anything at all about it. I don't know if I do. I think I'm gonna want you actually a little different. Yeah, it's too late here. Yeah, so the spacing, again, is move order dependent. Um, yeah, I'm already dead if I do that. Okay, this is, um, this could be fine. If I do this and start rotating around, I made some ice. I'm just gonna lose a puff here and that's fine. I have enough for the rest of this operation, I think. All right, so who do I want where? It ends up being kind of a diagonal line either this way or to the south. I always go north for some reason. Uh, I don't know if it makes a difference. Okay, uh, let's do that earlier. I want you there so I can get my stick here and I'm gonna wait a moment so you'll be stunned. Okay, great. So you're loaded into place. I stun you, swing here, make ice, go here. And I lose another one, but I do have enough to get this done still. If I can just repeat that same process. I want you stunned, because I want you closer. Okay, apparently I remember how to do this. Uh, I want to wait so that you're stunned as that one moves. Wait so that you're stunned as that one moves. And there we go. Now you get out of my way, and I have a nice bridge. Uh-oh, I don't think there's a way back anymore. No goblins out here. Coming this way might have been a mistake. So yeah, secret room, optional, no goblins in here, but completionist Bethro wants to do the room anyway. All right, so I get a mandatory staff for this. Uh, looks like there are no more sword tokens, so it's gonna be staff the whole time. Okay, so being a secret room, this one's a little harder than the others. It's kind of complicated. So there's this like broken diamond shape here with a 22.5 with a, uh, degree path cut through it and a bunch of mechanisms. So four rock golems, one construct, need to die, and Bithro needs a way out. Obviously he's not coming back this way. And yeah, I made this wide enough that no matter how you do the, the fluff bridge, let's see. Theoretically, if you could find a way to use every puff, because you get six of them, one, two, three, four, five. Does that put you in uh I'm curious. Oh, I can't have puzzle view on here. One, two, three, four. Okay, yeah, theoretically, if you somehow made your bridge one wider, like use every single puff to get as much vertical space as possible, there'd be no reason to do that, but theoretically, if you could, then you would be in a non-traversable space. Oops, I should have gone one wider, so that wouldn't even be theoretically possible. But anyway, yeah, so this is wide enough that no matter what shape you choose other than that one, you'll get here. Uh, right, so bunch of stuff going on. Bithra needs a way out. The only way that's going to happen is with ice. And there are four water tiles to bridge across. Uh, and there are four puffs in the form of fluff right now. So all four of these need to be rescued and used for bridging, which means you need something to uh, push against them to destroy them. So there's this spot here with a checkpoint on it. Doesn't that look suspicious? Uh, and just a bunch of stuff. 
This room went through several revisions. It used to be a lot meaner than it is now. I tried to make it as gentle as I could. Uh, these two force arrows were a late addition, and I'll show you what they're good for. Um, if I just go in here and start interacting with things, what can I do? I can step on this, which does nothing but close that force arrow. All right, so I'm not going here, and now I'm stuck. Um, I can hit this orb, which releases a construct and turns on the fire trap, and also turns off these force arrows and this force arrow in case I'd stepped here already. So Construct, however, can't reach me because there's shallow water there preventing him, and I can't get to him because there's a force arrow there, and one that would be here if I went up that way. So um, he needs a smooth surface along here so he can slide into where I am. And the way we're going to provide it to him is with these. So now, this is why these force arrows are added, uh, because it was kind of a nightmare to try and reform this fluff blob in this spot with four loose puffs just doing whatever the heck they want whenever but with the force arrows it's a lot gentler to just herd them into place and kind of keep them there uh it's not like trivial but it's easier than it would be otherwise Okay, so you go there, you go there. That's a start. It's not everything I need, though. Okay, these are not staying put. Ow. Okay, um... I remember how to fluff bridge, but apparently I don't remember how to fluff herd. Okay, that's... I've already done this, though. Let's, uh, stun this one so it stays just out of my way for a minute. Okay, so that one's there. That's nice. Okay, that's a good start. Fluff doesn't die if I do that. Neither does the puff. Okay, there we go. Nice and straightforward. Okay, so fluff blob there. Uh, these force arrows will get in my way now, so they go away when I hit this. All right, so Construct has a smooth surface, as smooth as it needs at least, <laughs> to get to me. Uh, there's also this stuff here. There's a decoy potion in this room. Okay, so you... What turns you off? That does. So orb guarded by several rock golems. What do I do with this Construct again? Let's see, so he's going to come to me. I can just kill him in the fire trap whenever I want. So I got this campfire here, keeping me kind of safe and warm. I want to say the construct needs to go up here. Um, and he'll need to be alive, otherwise this shallow water will sink him. Exterminate. But if he's dead, I can manipulate him easier. Let's see, so this turns off somehow by that orb, right. Now why am I putting the construct up here? Ooh. I know this is the right step to do, but why do I do it? Yeah, so anyway, end goal is to push something across here. Uh, since this is all shallow water, it's going to have to be a live construct going across where the puffs are. The puffs have to get up there. That's what the decoy is for. We'll get to that part. Um, what are these mechanisms? There is a force arrow that you can't really see here. You just have to inspect to, to find out there's a force arrow there. Um, why is there a powder keg? Okay, right. The way this is set up, B-Throw can never get to this little horizontal island. Eh, strictly speaking, that's not true. He could go through there after hitting that orb. But anyway, that's for the Construct to do things. Construct's going to lock himself in again. Well, lock me out, rather. And he can't push this because of the Force Arrow. But he gives me a golem problem and turns off my fire trap. Don't I want that on? Wait, that's not what turns it on. What turns it back on? This does, or this, but I can't get there anymore. Or actually can't get there yet, rather. Uh, you're not there anymore. So I need to deal with three live rock golems without my bonfire. And... Uh, get to the orb that they were guarding. I think I can stash one. Let's see, there's a few different places for this. 
Oh boy, um, let's do this a little differently. I really would like just one at a time. Let's do this. All right, so you go up here and go like there. That'll do for now. You, I'm going to stash. I think I can get away with putting you in there. This one's coming to me, but I can just deal with it. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so they're all out of my way. I have my bonfire back. And I can smash things on it now. And I'm gonna... Okay, so those threats are eliminated. There's one more left in here still. Uh, those are going to be... Does this construct need to be dead for this process? I don't think so. Okay, I think I see how it is. Uh, hmm. I think there's an easy way and a hard way to do this, but the hard way is pointless. Um, I'll show what I mean in a second. So, hitting this orb not only turned on the fire trap, but also turned off this arrow. This is a big tangled mess. <laughs> I don't know. I just kind of threw a bunch of stuff in this room and called it good. I think it's cool. Uh, decoy. Decoy goes here because it's going to attract the puffs to that location, because something has to, otherwise you're not going to be able to push them in. Um, something warm has to be up there and the decoy is the only option. Do I want to do that now? What's with this construct? Let's see, if I'm going to do things in this area, I do need this arrow off so I can get back out, so that orb needs to be hit. I think that's actually the next step I want to do. So here, have a powder keg. Have the ability to move. And then I want to save you from exploding so I step back uh, so that that goes off and... Oh yeah, that releases you so I can reaccess you. That's why I actually want to do that. Got it. And there's one more friend in here that I will need for what I'm doing. Okay, oh shoot, okay, yeah, so that I don't wanna do that yet. It's not time. Gotta finish my operations in here first. Uh, uh. There we go. Okay, uh, so now I can do the construct thing, I think. Sure. And at this point, I can kill him. So what I was saying is, um, I could leave the construct alive. Oh wait, no, I can't. I need to have my staff the entire way through here to keep pushing him. So I do need stepping stones in all four of those positions. That's gonna be easier to do before I release the construct, which I can do, right? Yes. Okay, so let's do the stepping stones now. Uh, this arrow's still here. Okay, well, let's do some of the stepping stones now. Just to get some of this trash out of here. Sure. Uh, not ready to perturb the fluff yet. All right, so Construct, you come to me, your jobs are done. There we go, room is clear, and I think that's fine. So he won't revive anymore. Um, and yeah, this uh, 22 and a half degree angle is perfect for pushing things through just like that. Could I have just made it a straight line instead? I don't know why I chose this angle, but for some reason that's what I chose. All right, so now puffs need to go north. Not reform as fluff, but do look at that tasty decoy up there, far away from me. Can do one at a time. Ooh, can't do that though. 
One at a time is easiest. You can do multiple if you want, but it's it's a pain. Ah. Huh. There we go. I can bring you all the way up there. Can I get away from your friends? Not quite. Will you look at me instead of the decoy? Of course you will. Okay, so I ran sufficiently far enough away from that. You are no longer in line for getting there, so I'll have to move you a bit. Yeah, a little bit of tedium here. I didn't as aggressively uh, remove tedium from secret rooms as I did from required ones. So you might have to do some fiddling in the secret places in this hold. Okay, so those are all where they need to be. And the construct sweeps them up and makes them traversable. Let's see, I think there is a timing here that doesn't quite work. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. But if I step back for a moment, it's fine. What? Oh, I did this wrong. It's a golem corpse, not a construct corpse that I need. That's right, the construct drops the thin ice. I forgot about that part. Oh man, a little last minute trap that I fell into. <laughs> All right, let's uh, change this a little bit then. That's fine. <laughs> How rude, why did I do that? All right, it's fine. <laughs> but that is kind of rude, and I kind of regret it a little bit now. <laughs> All right, oh yeah, up here. Not too close, but you know, close enough. Ooh. Uh, yeah, you're still looking at me. That's a problem. Those two will find their way. Uh, no, they won't. Well, maybe now? Sure, there we go. Ah, Force Arrow, that's why you went north instead of northwest. Mm -hmm. That's a good reason. Hey, don't do that. There's still danger for puffs here. Okay. Let's get to where we need to be, please. Yeah. Sure, that works. I'll go here and you'll go there. Okay, you're in place. This thing doesn't drop thin ice as it goes over it. And there we go. B3 gets a way out. Neat. <laughs> Fun little secret room. Okay, and that's actually all of level one. Kind of. <laughs> there might be something more later. We'll see. Alright, so next time, gonna go down those stairs and show you what is on the second level. I'll see you then.